Hi, my name is Chase, and welcome to the Wellness Center podcast, where we're going to talk all things red light therapy. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode. Please make sure to like and subscribe so you can get updated and notified on all of our newest episodes that we'll be releasing. Have a great rest of your day and enjoy the episode. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for joining in. My name is Chase and welcome to the Wellness Center podcast. If you haven't already, please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel so you can get updated on all of our newest content that we release every week. We're reviewing all of the most up-to-date, um, peer-reviewed, scientific published studies on red light therapy, low-level laser therapy, photobiomodulation, near-infrared light therapy, all generally the same so please make sure to like and subscribe if that's the field of interest that you're interested in, and we'll just get right to it. So today, and just a reminder, looking at my camera, looking at my computer. So today we are going to be talking about a study that came out um, called, that talks about nonspecific neck pain. So I wanted to go over what nonspecific neck pain is. I want to go over a study that was published about it, and then of course, like always, some at-home remedies to help with your nonspecific neck pain. So neck pain and low back pain. So I am looking on physiopedia.com and neck pain um, is considered to be nonspecific and there are no known pathoanatomical causes. Pathoanatomical, I had to look that up because I didn't know what that meant. Um, but that is basically the, the study of the causes of something. So they're un, what this is saying is that they're not sure why neck pain happens. Um, Non-specific neck pain happens other than it just happens. We're humans. We wear out. Um, so that's specifically what non-specific neck pain is. It's pain that they can't understand why it's there. So the study, we are looking at um, physio quarterly from the Warclaw University of Health and Sports Sciences is where this came out. Um, now the ab the title that's the word the title of this is photobiomodulation in the treatment of chronic nonspecific neck pain a random um, randomized clinical trial. This was published on the fifth of January this year. So again, we're always looking at the newest stuff coming out because this is a new and evolving form of therapy. It's really, really cool. So neck pain is defined as the presence of musculoskeletal pain in the posterior region of the neck. Above the shoulders or in the upper dorsal area. I am not an, a fish. I don't have dorsals. I don't even know fish have dorsals. It's not my wheelhouse. Photo red lights my wheelhouse. I'm trying to make it my wheelhouse. Physiotherapy aims to minimize pain, recover mobility, and strengthen muscles. For this, it uses sev several techniques, such as photobiomodulation, which can be achieved by a light-emitting diode, an LED, you have many TV, um, and there's a lot of places that have LED lights. Oh. Therapy and low-level laser therapy. The objective of this study was to analyze the effects of the association of LED and LLLT, low-level laser therapy, in the treatment of chronic nonspecific neck pain. So here's the methods. There was 28 individuals divided into a control group and an intervention group, pre and post treatment visual analog scale, leads assessment of neuropathic symptoms and signs. Neuropathic is um, the deadening and the pain in your nerves. And the McGill pain questionnaire were used. Both groups were submitted to six sessions during two weeks. Okay, let's talk about that really quick. The most recent science tells us from what we see from our experts is that four sessions is typically what it takes before you notice a difference. And then from there, it can take anywhere from six sessions in total to 12 sessions in total to run in its entire course, meaning that it just takes time, guys. It, it takes a lot of freaking time. That's okay. And so, so does everything. It's all like dieting and working out. Um, we also say that red light therapy is an adjunct therapy, meaning you should do it with other things. So if you're coming in for nonspecific neck pain, it could be really, really beneficial for you guys to also go and meet with a physical therapist. Now, if you're in the Utah area and you're watching this and you're unsure of a good physical therapist, I'll tag them. We, we highly recommend Elevate, Elevate uh, Physical Therapy. Uh, the guy over there, Tim, he's super awesome. He's a really good therapist. He's helped a lot of our clients. 
Um, and at some point, I'm going to go up there, and he's going to help me with some of my shoulder pain. So, Tim, if you're watching this. Um, now, it was composed with a cluster apparatus, meaning that's the device they used. It's a handheld device. We do full body red light therapy. We've got a really high-end pod, Cadillac pods. It's called the Regen Q8 pod. Um, it's super, super cool. Composed with an arrangement of three LEDs, all at 590 nanometers of light. We run four different nanometers of light, ranging from about 690 up to about 900, meaning we penetrate all depths of your body. And what we do is super, super intense. Um, and low-level laser therapy, 830 nanometers. The control group received a placebo laser intervention. The application was punctual, one minute per region. We do up to 20 minutes per session, tapping every single part of your body um, at the point of greatest pain in the trapezius, scalene, and sternocleidomastoid muscles. If I said that wrong, just forgive me. Again, I'm not a doctor. Um, results. In both cases, the pain reduction was significant for the three assessment instruments. However, the effect sizes for the visual analog scale and the McGill pain questionnaire were higher in the intervention group. The photobiomodulation of low level laser therapy. You have it. Again, it works. I've yet, to see a, <laughs> I've yet to see a study saying it doesn't work. And the studies are getting wilder and wilder too, which is super cool. Um, okay. At home remedies, that's what everyone's, I'm sure, dying to know at this point. What can I do at home in adjunct to the red light therapy? Here are a couple options for you. You can apply heat or ice, you know, hot and cold. Take over-the-counter pain relievers. That I don't recommend. We, we're really good with pain management over here, and it's not going to have nearly as many side effects. Most over-the-counter drugs have anywhere from 10 to 100 side effects. Our most adverse side effect. If you're an unlucky person, it might be a headache. Stretch, but avoid sudden movements. Yeah. Yeah. If you jerk your head, the muscles could seize up. Uh, don't do that. Could rattle your brain and potentially cause a minor concussion. Uh, so, yeah, nice stretches. Get with a yoga instructor. See a physical therapist. Always a great option. Consider chiropractic care. Again, a great option. The chiropractor and the physical therapist that we work with up at Elevated are great. I'll put their information below so you can check that out. Book a massage <laughs> if you can afford it. Um, try acupuncture. Acupuncture, we say this is acupuncture with light. So, but again, acupuncture is a great thing if you can do it, afford it. Limit physical activity that bothers your neck. Me, I love boxing and I love kickboxing. So yeah, when I get neck pain, I got to avoid that for a while, which is unfortunate. Um, and how to prevent neck stiffness. You reduce stress, exercise regularly, create an ergonomic workplace, um, and then limit how long you look at a smartphone. All that can cause neck pain. Okay, guys, uh, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much. All of these links for all of these different studies and all of the information that I find is going to be in the links below in the description. Again, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe and like the channel so you can get updated on our weekly releases. Have a great rest of your day, guys. I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.